1950s, Yellowstone National Park. Geologist Francis Joe Boyd is researching volcanic rock on the Rhyolite Plateau when he notices something off. While it had previously been assumed the rock in the area was formed by ancient lava flows, a section of it was different. Upon further inspection, Boyd identified it as a type of rock that geologists refer to as tufts, or solidified ash deposits from an explosive volcanic eruption. An eruption kind of like this. Boyd also noticed a depression in the Yellowstone Plateau, but didn't put two and two together until a few years later when geologist Bob Christensen and a group of USGS scientists were tasked with surveying the park. By the late 1960s, they discovered that Yellowstone had experienced three large explosive eruptions. One about 2.1 million years ago, another about 1.3 million years ago, and a final one about 600,000 years ago. And these eruptions were to blame for the formation of three large depressions, the most famous of which we know today as the Yellowstone Caldera. And that's the moment America began freaking out over the Yellowstone volcano. Actually, that's not true. It took us about a quarter of a century and an episode of the BBC's Horizon for people to really start becoming aware of Yellowstone's supervolcano potential. Then, it took a follow-up two-hour BBC docudrama called, well, Supervolcano, for people to really be set off. Since then, we've kind of gone Yellowstone supervolcano crazy, and it can be difficult at times to separate what's fact and what's just internet rumor. So here are five answers to some of the biggest questions regarding the potential doomsday eruption of Yellowstone National Park. 1. Somewhere I read these eruptions happen every 600,000 years. Could the next one happen any minute now? The answer is no. First of all, there's no evidence to back up the claim that volcanoes erupt at predetermined intervals. Secondly, there's no evidence to suggest that a catastrophic eruption is imminent at Yellowstone. There's also no evidence to suggest one could happen in the next 10,000 years. In fact, there's no evidence to even suggest a smaller eruption of lava is imminent. 2. But I read somewhere that parts of Yellowstone are actually gaining an elevation from lava filling the magma chamber beneath it. That part is actually true. We'll turn again to our friend Bob Christensen for this answer. So we now know that the Yellowstone caldera is not simply going up, but it goes up and down in a sort of breathing motion apparently at times. Uh, its overall deformation does seem to be an inflationary one, but it's not a steady sort of thing, and there are, in fact, periods of deflation. Essentially, he goes on to say that there are periods of inflation, periods of dormancy, and even periods of shrinking. But all in all, the dome-shaped caldera is increasing in elevation. Scientists aren't concerned, though, as the magma is more than 10 kilometers below the surface and would need to be about 2 to 3 kilometers beneath the surface to cause alarm. 3. So it's safe to go to Yellowstone right now? Yes, it's safe to go to Yellowstone right now. 4. Well, but who's making sure of all this? Several organizations are keeping a constant eye on the Yellowstone caldera, including the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, the USGS, the University of Utah, and the National Park Service. Even in the extremely unlikely event of a catastrophic eruption, we emphasize extremely unlikely, there'd be days if not weeks of warning leading up to it. AKA enough time to get your ass out of there and on a plane to Bora Bora. 5. Can anything be done to prevent an eruption? While scientists have weighed this question, with a group even developing a theory that a catastrophic eruption could be halted by drilling down to the magma chamber and cooling it with lots of water, we're talking the volume of the Great Lakes. There are currently no realistic ways to prevent a catastrophic eruption. And as Jake Lowenstern, scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory wrote in 2005, the temperatures, pressures, physical characteristics of partially molten rock, and the immensity of the magma chamber are beyond humans' ability to influence, much less control. So there you have it. There's currently nothing to worry about, and even if there was, there's nothing you can do. Except maybe watch a few more episodes of Strange Heartland History. All right, have you been Yellowstone? And what was your favorite thing that you saw there? Let us know in the comments and be sure to check out our new series, Legendary Firearms, Thursdays at 11 a.m. Central Time on Rated Red's YouTube channel. I'm Christopher Pilney.